today we're taking a look at the Sony a6300 and evaluating whether it's a viable option four years after its release. The Sony a6300 was released in February of 2016 and it was a revolutionary camera. At the time, the only other comparable cameras being the Sony a7S II and the Panasonic GH4. The a7S II starting at $3,000 for just the body and the GH4 was over $1,000 but featuring a much smaller sensor with a few other trade-offs as well. When the a6300 came out, it was $1,150 with a lens or $1,000 for the body alone. The camera had one of the fastest autofocus systems on the market, along with some outstanding video specs including 4K video as well as 1080 at 120 frames per second. It filled a void for creators looking to do both photography and video without breaking the budget. Now four years later in 2020, the camera has four successors and the advantages and disadvantages have become quite a gray area. So how does it compare to the latest iterations of the camera? The first thing we'll be talking about is resolution and the sensor. The camera features a 24 megapixel APS-C sized CMOS sensor, which is the same resolution across the board on all the 6000 series. Looking at the tests that were published by DxOMark, the newer 6400 has a slightly better signal to noise than the 6500, but the 6300 outperforms both. The one thing I would expect a newer camera to be better with is low light. Their findings also show that the older camera has better color depth and dynamic range. The differences are small, but I would really expect the newer models to be slightly better in at least one of the categories. I did some research and according to Imaging Resource, the sensor in the 6400 is the exact same sensor in the 61 and 6600. I would anticipate the performance to be right in line with one another. In terms of video resolution, they all shoot 4K video at up to 30 frames per second, as well as full HD up to 120 frames per second. For video, Sony seems to be using the same methods for readout in all of the camera models, creating a very slight 1.23 times crop in 4K when shooting 30 frames per second, as well as a 1.14 times crop when recording at 120 frames per second. They all also offer features such as focus peaking, manual focus assist, zebras, and log profiles with the exception of the 6100 for the last one, as well as they all have phenomenal autofocus for video. So what's different about the newer cameras? Really the notable improvements would be that the, all the newer models have a touchscreen. The 61, 64, and 66 do not have a record limit, and the screen flips 180 degrees. The 65 and 66 have IBIS, in-body image stabilization, and the 66 also has a larger battery. The one major disadvantage I have found about the 6300 when compared to the newer models is that it has a significantly larger problem when it comes to overheating. This is something I've noticed particularly when I'm recording talking head footage for extended periods of time, and adding a monitor only makes it worse. For me, it has not been a huge issue, just something to be aware of. I can see how it might be a big problem if you're buying the camera for more professional shoots. You'd really want something that's a little bit more reliable, at least for the interviews. The only other disadvantage I can think of is the battery life, which is pretty atrocious on all of the 6000 series, with the exception of the 6600 from what I've read, because it has a larger battery. None of the cameras offer 10-bit output over HDMI, which is quite disappointing seeing that the other manufacturers like Fuji and Nikon have begun to offer this in similar models. If you're in the market for a 6000 series camera, there are definitely a few competitors to Sony to keep in mind. If you're someone who does mostly video and some stills, I would consider looking into maybe a Panasonic G9 or GH5, which both offer more advanced video features, but both cost more than almost every model in the 6000 lineup. Or if you're doing slightly more stills than video, I would consider looking at the X-T30 from Fuji, which has outstanding video and photo specs, but it's still pretty costly at $1,000. After considering all of the options above, I chose to go with the 6300 because I saw the differences to be very minuscule between the 6300 and its successors. Perhaps the most important update being the improved cooling. Otherwise, the autofocus is already great and I felt like I really do not need in-body stabilization for what I'm using the camera for. A huge plus for the 6300 is the cost to value ratio. You can basically get all of the same components and important features for far less because it is an earlier model that it's being phased out. You can get a new one on eBay for $650 and I've seen the bodies used go for as low as $450. If you can find a copy that is the right price, they're 100% still worth buying. The price is currently declining due to the newer models being out. Please feel free to leave me a comment if there's something you think I've missed.